Peter Opondo. I'm born again. Uh, we serve in a ministry called Family Foundation uh, where we prepare young adults into marriage and family life. And uh, together I'm with my wife. She can introduce herself. Yeah, I'm Emma Okelo, the wife to Peter. I am a proud wife. I'm also a mother of three. I enjoy everything in this marriage. And this, this is, is our, our love, love story. story. Our first time to meet as couples, uh, that one uh, found that I just came from a relationship uh, where when uh, I went for introduction that family, uh, the family said I'm too poor to marry their daughter. Uh, so one of the things that I decided, I went uh, to a prayer mountain to pray and uh, to ask God to show me now uh, the lady whom I will marry. And uh, in that time, in that process, then uh, I was speaking in a youth program, and then I posted some of my pictures uh, when we were preaching. So she asked me if uh, she can invite me to their church. Uh, so from there, we were in contact and communication, and then uh, we finally decided to come and meet. Uh, and uh, when we met, then uh, I just asked her if she's ready for marriage, because I was feeling time was not on my side. It was at a certain junction. Of course, after we talked in, over the social media, when I saw the pictures, and but that time I was a youth leader in our church, and so when we met, me I thought we are meeting to discuss issues with the church and the youth programs, but then he 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 was a man looking for a wife to marry, so when we met, he went direct to the point, which was a shock on me, but then I asked him, so what do you do and. Uh, why do you want it? Why is it that we are just meeting and you, you, you want a marriage? And so he told me, no, I just want to get married. So it was hard to me also when I asked him and he told me he's a pastor, then even if I was also in the process of looking for a marriage and a serious person, when he said he's a pastor, then it crushed everything off and I was like, no, me, I do not belong to this place because I have never ever dreamt to be a pastor's wife and it was the toughest moment I just said no just because you are a pastor for me no and then we we went somewhere yeah uh, we mm -hmm. I, I gave him t I gave her time uh, so that she can think about it and uh, then I, I asked her to meet uh, me in town and uh, I asked her what she loves so much and she told me she would love taking fish so there is a place uh, in town where I, I do take fish. So when we met, uh, now I met with her so that she can give me the answer. And uh, to show her that I was serious, immediately after taking the fish, uh, we proceeded to go and look for a wedding venue. Immediately when uh, we went for an introduction in that family, uh, and uh, the family said, uh, they cannot allow me to marry their daughter because I was too poor and I had nothing at all. So one of the things that I decided because I had friends who had joined me uh, to come and uh, see how I'm getting a woman that day. So I felt like this was a mockery and uh, being a mockery, I decided uh, immediately I went to the prayer mountain to go and pray and uh, seek for a wife. I know most of you, there are people who believe in prayers and there are people who say these are not reality. But the truth of the matter, when I was at the prayer mountain, I went to pray and fast for 40 days to look for a wife. Uh, then on day one, uh, when we were meeting in the evening service, one of the preacher students said that you have to go back, your prayers have been answered. And I told the preacher, you don't know what brought me here. And they told me, no, God is saying your prayer has been answered. So the fee that I paid uh, entering into the prayer mountain, I was refunded back. And then uh, I asked God for a sign. And I told God, now, if I told you I've answered my prayer, give me a sign. And uh, then immediately God told me, uh, go to your Facebook page, uh, search for this name. Her name was Emma G by that time. When I searched for Emma G, then I looked at her and then, 
God told me that is the lady you are going to marry. And then I was like, we have never met, we have never been talking. Uh, we have been friends on Facebook. Nobody has ever talked to another person. So uh, immediately when I came back, I was doing a program for the youth. Uh, she was a youth leader in their church. And when I was doing this program, then I posted the pictures. Then immediately I started seeing her liking my post, liking my post and commenting. So she invited me to their church. She said, would like you, you come to minister to our church and talk to the youths. And then I said, it's okay. So immediately when uh, I saw the conversation, then I was convinced that this is an answered prayer. So later on, I asked her for a meeting and I told her, before I come to church, can I meet you? I see you face to face so that I can know actually whom am I talking to truly. Uh, meeting her, I was actually going to confirm because our social media, you realize somebody has this face uh, on Facebook and then uh, when you meet the person kwa ground, mambo ni tofauti. So I decided, let me meet her first then to confirm whether actually this is the right person. So when we met, uh, I found the pictures on social media are the same, and that is what I saw. And then I felt a lot of peace in my heart. I did not want a pastor because of so many reasons. One, I was a prayer coordinator in our CU back in my college. Also, I was a, a leader in also another Protestant organization, a chapel in, a, in another college again. So the, ish, the things that I went through when I was a leader in the CU and the, in every process I was being, a, even in my current position then as a youth leader, I was like, I do not want such a case again even in my marriage because I knew marriage is a lifetime. So I don't want things that will be disturbing me again because I've been disturbed enough as a leader in the Christian Union. So that's so, some of the reasons I didn't want a pastor. So the reason as to why now finally I gave in is because first I, he agreed, we went because I told him now before we do any other thing after we came from the venue, looking for the venue for the wedding because him, he was serious, I couldn't resist. So after coming from there, I told him now you will have to see my my prayer, my bishop, my pastor, spiritual leader. But before we went to our bishop, he took me to his spiritual parents, Pastor Obed. And when we went there, the pastor was just very clear and I loved him because he said things that just came out clearly into my mind and I was like, even if I resist, I think this is just God. So from that meeting where we met with Pastor Obed before we went to my bishop, I just got an answer and I was like, God has confirmed everything and now it is the will of God, the perfect will. I remember he said, there is the will of God and there is the perfect will of God. And he told me, my daughter, this is the perfect will of God. And so from there, we just began classes for premarital classes. Being a family also foundation pastor, he guided us in many ways and I think that's the point I, I came into agreement with his agenda and his suggestion and everything. At that moment, I, I was single because I, I had a broken relationship. I had planned a wedding. We had a, a plan. I was to wed and my wedding broke up just two months to our wedding. So at that moment, I was in a, in a space where I was just Cool, cooling down and just praying and seeking God. And I, I, in fact, I did not want anything to do with the church man, leave alone the pastor, because even the previous one, he was a very strong Christian young man. And when the, we the wedding broke up, I went through a lot of tribulations. So many people were in Ikejeli, a lot of shame and s a lot. Even my colleagues, some of them said I just wanted to eat their money. So. From that moment, I was just in, a sp in my own space at the moment when we were meeting. And I did not want another relationship, especially with a churchman and more so a pastor. But uh, when things were okay, when I also shared with my pastor, he told me, in fact, he asked me one question, are you sure you have healed? And I told him, Daddy, I, I am not sure, but maybe if God is here, we can give it a try, just meet the man because he was hesitant to meet him. 
but I convinced him that maybe just meet him, God may speak to you something. But already I had something in my heart after we met Pastor Obed. After we came from uh, my spiritual father and uh, uh, we started the premarital counseling, one of the challenges that I had uh, at uh, that time, I was not talking to my family. Uh, I was not talking to my parents, and uh, uh, the parents who adopted me because uh, it found that I quitted uh, my job and uh, I entered into full time ministry. And uh, going into full time ministry, uh, the family was not happy at all. And then they said, We have nothing to do with you. So uh, we stayed almost. Uh, seven years without seeing each other with my family. So one of the challenges was how do I introduce her to my family? Then the other challenge, now I have my biological mother and then I have my mother who also adopted me. So how do I tell her that this is my mother and also this is my mother? How do you explain? So it was a, a hectic journey for me, uh, but uh, as we continue moving on, uh, things were revealing themselves and uh, we came to a point uh, when uh, now I had no otherwise. I was doing a conference in Nairobi then my parents came in and when they came now that is when I introduced I introduced her to them and I said this is the woman I want to marry and they said bring her home uh, we want to see her we will talk uh, from there and then the journey began. So from there we went to my parents after going there. But remember, these are not my biological parents. So there is still an information that is still hidden. But I was trying to see, if I tell her that uh, this is my background, she might end up rejecting me. So I tried to hide some stuff. But you know, uh, nothing can be hidden. Uh, you may not talk, but people will always talk. Uh, so one day when we were in the committee, one of my sister uh, came in and uh, she did the terrible, uh, telling her the truth, that do you know this person, the real father is so and so, the mother is so, did this guy tell you about the real family? And uh, from there, she, she was so cool, we finished the committee meeting. When we were about to come out, uh, she's asking me, who is so and so? And then from there, I'm shocked. I was like, who told you? Why do you allow people to tell you things? So it was a bit hectic, but uh, we managed. And uh, when now I had to tell her the truth, and I told her this is what is happening, this is my family, this is why I was in this other family, and this is what happened. And uh, from there now, uh, she knew the truth. So one of the challenges now is whom are we going with them uh, to go and see the family? Uh, because I remember that time, even uh, when we were still continuing, uh, she called the mother and told the mother, I'm in a relationship. And the mother talked with me on phone, and the mother told me that, uh, my son, you are welcomed, but uh, ensure you, you people are safe. So she could always check on us every now and again. But now, the challenge I'm, I was having, how do I who will be going with me uh, when I'm going to their place? So I said, Yakwamba, Yule Mzazi Amba Mikulea, Ndio Mzazi Pia. So I could not also neglect these other people. So we sat down with my parents and uh, we talked and uh, we agreed on the journey. And my mother, my biological mother, was against me going to pay dowry. Uh, reason, uh, my mother said, my father died uh, when uh, a dowry was not paid. And uh, when according to our culture and tradition is that if my mother's dowry has not been paid mm -hmm. then we as the children are the ones who will <coughs> pay a dowry so that this one will allow us to pay dowries to our children. wives mm -hmm. or it will even help our children so that in future they can also get married without any problem but because I will, I'm born again and I said I will not follow tradition so I saw I saw a lot of complication so what I decided, I said, I will concentrate with this other family. Uh, we will walk with them and go with them uh, to my in-laws. So when we went uh, for the introduction, 
uh, we found the people waiting for us there and uh, we introduced ourselves and uh, they said, we give you our blessing. When I first had the idea of uh, the other family from the sister, I, I was shocked, but then I was like, because remember, even the sisters, I did not know them. I only knew of one sister. But then when they came, he told me I have other sisters who are coming, even though he did not explain to what extent, or who these sisters are, they first cousins or they are real sisters. He did not do that. But after the committee, I think it was the pre-wedding. After we finished with the pre-wedding and everything, when the sister shared a lot with me, she shared so much with me, I said, because in my mind I knew that he will always tell me the truth. I was like, this one, let me just be cool so that I will find out. And I, from the word go from our first day, our first conversation, everything, he was always saying the truth. So I did not have also a problem. I was like, he will still tell me the truth. So when I shared with him, he was shocked and he was really mad at me. Who told me that? Why, why did you allow yourself to hear other people? But I just told him, the stories I had, they cannot be just fake and lies. Just tell me the truth. I will know because every family has a story and every family has its weakness and it's every other thing, other strength and everything. Just like my family have issues. And he told me now, he told me now, let us sit down. And it was also late. Let us sit down and share. he shared now things. But because he was always saying the truth, I did not see any problem because I trusted everything he told me because every word he was saying was just stirring with the other words the sister had said. So everything was true. Only that he told me he feared when he tells me I will not agree with him or maybe I will leave him. He had the fear. But to me that was not an issue because I remember when I grew up in our family in my village, every other family had some kind of weakness and challenges. And even my own family have issues. So I did not see a problem, only that he was fearing. I just accepted and I moved on. But I told him, now because the mother was not here, I, I would wish that one day you will take me to her or she will also come, which he confirmed to me that the mother will be around and everything. So I, I, it was not an issue so much to me. Now when they came to my place, I first went home. In, in, in our place, I went prior so that I would prepare some things and I make things in order. So when I went earlier, three days late earlier, I shared with my mother everything and we talked together with my dad. My mother was, was still, she's late now. So when we shared everything and my parents were always ready to welcome a man who was serious and godly, so long as he's not someone else's husband. My mother would always say that as the Jesus people, in, now in mother tongue, I'm just translating, the Jesus people, we do not take other people's husband. So that is the only thing they would want to hear that so long as he's not another man's husband, we welcome him. And he told me, have you confirmed everything? Because we hear people of Nairobi, some of them, they are not serious. I told her that we have walked and I'm sure he do not have another wife. So they welcomed them and when they came back, my parents were so happy and they really got the blessing and they said, we bless you. And they also told us that we cannot demand anything from you people because even if we say we want this huge amount of money of the whole world, so long as you love each other, you may even disappear. So they just said, we do not want to equate our daughter with any other thing. We just want to give you a blessing but whatever you will find in your heart to bring home, we accepted. Then we went and we planned a day for now to now go for the dowry because that was just an introduction, which my mom passed on before we went for the dowry and even before the wedding. So it was just a smooth journey. My, my side, our parents were so okay, so welcoming, and they were very happy. Before we went to pay uh, the dowry, uh, one of the unfortunate things that happened, uh, my mother-in-law uh, got sick. And uh, when she got sick, uh, she got admitted in the hospital. 
and then we went to Kisumu to see her and uh, we tried all we could and then we came back to Nairobi and as we came back to Nairobi uh, after some uh, when we were going to the AG's office uh, to register our marriage uh, when we are coming back one of the things that happens uh, she got a call and uh, the call said uh, the mother is gone and uh, it became as a shock so it had to end uh, a lot of uh, our activities so in this place is a place whereby we were to decide whether we continue with the wedding issue or we leave it at that point so that we can wait until other time uh, because uh, in this uh, she's the first born a child in a family so uh, a lot of responsibility in our culture uh, are always being left to the firstborn and a uh, firstborn is like an uh, uh, assistant parent in our culture so she had to carry the, the cross for everything and uh, we had now to come and uh, start planning on the burial and uh, not concentrating on the wedding uh, unfortunately or fortunately we had a wedding committee the wedding committee people were not giving money but uh, when it came to burial when we just opened the whatsapp group for the burial uh, we got contribution within a week and uh, i came to realize that uh, people will always come to help you when things are bad and not when things are okay which is our nat nature as africans uh, so after the burial we came back and uh, when we came back now we planned and uh, we decided that uh, we are not going to pay dowry immediately but uh, since we finished the introduction we got the blessings of the parents now we decided let us do the wedding then in this process uh, after the wedding we come and pay clear with the parents to finish the dowry issue remember we went for the introduction part and the introduction part they accepted us as part of the culture uh, this is something that in our culture we say it is called a year and they accept you and they say now we give you our blessing so we said uh, with those blessing and what has happened now uh, let us now concentrate on the wedding then after the wedding is when now we went to pay the dowry because also people were talking uh, in the village and they were saying why did they have a big wedding and they never came to clear the dowry issue yeah. and uh, we decided let us go back and clear with the parents. So when it came to dowry, uh, we left Nairobi uh, with few friends and a few family members. And uh, when we went to pay, remember my mother's relative uh, could not be part of us because they were not believing on the issue of me going to pay dowry. Uh, because they were saying, in our culture it is wrong. If I pay dowry, if my mother's dowry has not been paid, then they said something bad will happen to me. So it was a journey of faith, whereby I'm breaking the tradition, I'm breaking the culture, I'm breaking the family uh, traditions. So when we went, uh, we went, we bought some cows, we bought some goats, and uh, also we had a very nice celebration, though in absentia of uh, my mother-in-law, which was uh, something that was hurting. So we had a great celebration, the community was around, and uh, they accepted what we took there, and people were so happy. When we came to the wedding, uh, the challenge we had was also that uh, we had uh, two pastors. We came from different church. I had my bishop, he had uh, or a bishop uh, whom she was serving under. And uh, one of, there was no conflict of interest because of the impact she has in the ministry and the impact I had in the ministry. So the two churches, there was conflict until uh, it came to a point whereby his bishop said, uh, we are not going to attend the wedding uh, because there was a conflict of Ninani Ataunganisha Arusi.